Hey everyone, welcome back to another introduction interview for the IPO Masterclass. Uh, super excited here to be talking with Eve. Um, and as always, the goal, the kind of uh, objective of these videos is to give you guys a sense of everybody's background and also their trading style uh, before we get into the webinar. So uh, Eve, thank you so much for being here and uh, really looking forward to this. My pleasure, Richard. Excited. Yeah, me too. And uh, I was like to kind of open things up with just kind of hearing about how you first got interested in the markets and kind of your trading background. Uh, so I'd love to dive into that. Sure. Yeah. Well, my uh, education is in finance, so I've always been interested in the stock market and stocks, find it fascinating, just how fast moving it is, the challenge of it. And I really started trading my own account in earnest in uh, 1995. I ran across uh, Bill O'Neill's book, How to Make Money in Stocks. I was looking for different investing and trading books and really dove into that and started attending Bill's seminars, uh, learning more and more about growth stocks. So I, I traded my own account from 95 and then I went on to work for Ropal Capital Management in 2011. And that's where I started uh, working as a portfolio manager with Jim Ropal. And I've been working there ever since. Uh, I get to do what I love every day. I love researching stocks and talking about the stock market and, and looking at all the moving parts. Uh, so and I feel really lucky in that way that uh, I have a passion for the stock market and stocks and, and I get to work on that. Yeah, fantastic. And along the way, were there any kind of key turning points? Uh, it's actually pretty cool that it seemed like you started out pretty quickly learning Bill's system and, and learning CanSlim and having that as your foundation. Yes, I was very lucky because in 95, so I, you know, I studied uh, growth stocks, I studied Bill's book, and I studied other books as well. And I started uh, trading my own account. I was very lucky because it was a very strong market at that point. Um, in, in 95, I chose some stocks and I said, wow, this really works. The system really works. And the problem is it's not really a good idea to start out and be very successful. I think it's important to learn lessons from stocks. And I, I think we'll talk about some of those as well along the way. So uh, it's really like you need to pay the tuition to the stock market and, and learn um, from your mistakes along the way. So starting with a strong market, I don't think was that great, <laughs> that great for me, because uh, then I learned some hard lessons when the markets became tough. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And what have been some of the most memorable trades that you've made or most impactful trades where, you know, you really came out of it with some key lessons, or it kind of, you know, flipped a switch and really transitioned your performance and brought it to a new level? You know, I was thinking about this. I've talked about eBay, and I want to mention that even though I've talked about it many times, and I think Amy Smith wrote about it uh, in her book as well, eBay in 1998 taught me several lessons. And uh, if you recall back in 98, looking at the chart, uh, it was an IPO. It had a you know a deep IPO base, and um, then when the market turned, um, it powered out of there on like a super, super gap out. And, you know, I mishandled that trade, but I think it was great in terms of lessons learned. So, you know, it shook me out. It was, and then it just went on without me and um, it had a phenomenal run, right? So you keep watching it, you know, week by week, month by month and, and you're not in it. Um, so the, one of the big lessons that I learned from that tr trade was you know, you need to be willing to try again if you get shaken out of a trade, because you can be right on the stock um, and wrong on the timing, right? right? So you have to you have to get both both right. The other thing I recall is reading some analyst reports. You know, different research. I would always you know read about different viewpoints, and I think you know one of the negative reports just got into my mind, and um, you know they were saying. The company doesn't have a moat around their business and, you know, um, competition can get in there easily. And so I was at that point just too easily swayed by um, by an analyst report. And so one of the big the other big lesson that I learned from eBay was to to really do your own research uh, and come to come to your own opinions. I mean, it's it's great to read all of that information, but in the end, the firsthand experience is very important. So, you know, going to the company, using their products, using their services, having that firsthand knowledge so that 
you know, one report, you know, one negative report doesn't sway you and, and knock you out of a, a potential big winner. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's one of the parts of your presentation, your personal presentation that I'm most looking forward to is you kind of explaining, you know, how you go about analyzing a stock and using an example as well. So I think that will help out a lot of people. Um, and I'd love to kind of hear your, you kind of answer this. Um, how would you describe your personal style as well as your time frame? And do you kind of prefer trading the IPO advanced phase or the institutional advanced phase? Kind of which one do you prefer between those two? Sure. Uh, I would say I'm an intermediate uh, position trader. So the typical position I'm going to be holding for a few months um, for a select few, you know, high conviction names early in the process. Um, I'm going to try to hold those for longer. So those may be a year or two. Um, my longest hold, I would say, was like two and a half years. So that, but that's kind of an outlier. But yeah. typically, it's uh, it's several months to uh, a year or two. And then I like trading both phases. I do like trading the IPO advanced phase. Now, when I do trade that phase, those are going to be shorter term trades. Um, so those may be, you know, several weeks to several months, you know, depending on the action of the IPO advance. So a little bit of both. Um, and I do trade, or even though I'm a position trader, I do trade around a core. So I'm an, act, I'm an active trader. I'm not going to, you know, if I expect the pullback, looking at the technicals, I'm going to reduce the position, try to hold on to a core. I'll be adding at different points and, and possibly hedging the position at certain points. So, um, so active there, always trying to hold a core in my higher conviction name. So what I'll do is I'll try to, you know, identify two positions, one or two that, you know, I'm going to try to hold for the longer term and then establish like a core position sized uh, to try to hold on to. But that would be more in the institutional advanced phase or mature stock. Yeah, makes sense. And how much of your process would you say is fundamental focused or uh, technical focused? Well, um, technicals usually point me to the, the next leaders, but then I'm going to dig in and research. Um, and yeah, I'm excited to talk about some of the screens that I use um, yeah. in the master class. I know we're going to, we're going to delve into those, but usually the technical action is what points me to a name. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to research it thoroughly. And, you know, some stocks may just move up um, and I'm not going to go after them because they don't have the growth story and I don't feel like they have the potential. Um, occasionally, it'll be based on a fundamental story, but I'm going to wait. I'm going to monitor that list of stocks where I think they have a great growth story and wait for the technicals to confirm that for me. So I wouldn't be trading strictly on the fundamentals, but it may bring that name to my attention and I'm going to monitor it, watch it, and then the technicals would need to confirm. And then that would be a, um, a great spot to, yeah. to really take a position in the name. Yeah, great. And uh, this, is, this is kind of an interesting question because I've kind of heard a little bit of a, a version from everybody. Um, what made you decide uh, to research IPOs and how did the the book and that process kind of, kind of come about? How did you guys basically just start to do the study? Oh, yeah. So um, this is going way back. Uh, well, I wanted to find a way to hopefully identify the next uh, Google, the next Amazon um, before it started its move. So I was wondering, is there, you know, is are there some clues? You know, are there, there are there some signs in advance? And, um, you know, I tried to do a little bit of work and then I realized you know, I started talking to um, folks that I work with closely on other research projects. And so, you know, Kathy and Eric and uh, and then Kurt joined in and we were all talking about it. And our project morphed over time. You know, we, we uh, had some stops and starts in the project uh, because with any research project, you can really get overwhelmed, but we we found our way and we focused on what we wanted to accomplish. And without that team, we would never come out with all of the great research findings because everyone brought their own unique perspective to the team. 
And we learned so much going through the process. And we were, the, the research findings were so eye opening that, you know, we started thinking to document them and to really document them thoroughly. Mm -hmm. And whenever you go through that process, when you're doing your own research, and then you have to like document it and really, you know, finally we were putting it into the book form. You know, it's just a great learning experience to put that down. And one of the things, you know, when we were researching early on, we looked, you know, are there IPO books out there? And we couldn't find many on the topic. So, you know, once we finished the research, we were looking at it and thinking that, you know, this could possibly be a book to share, you know, put all the research findings together and share them because we found that the research findings helped our trading. And we thought if we document that in a book format, then that could help potentially other traders. So um, yeah, so I asked Kathy if she wanted to um, write a book with me. <laughs> and uh, we started that, that started the journey of the, of the book phase. And uh, yeah, it's been, a, it's been a great journey and uh, hoping that it's helping other traders out there. Yeah, fantastic. And uh, what were some of the key lessons that you took away from the study and kind of applied to your own trading? Obviously, we'll, we'll definitely dive deeper into this in, in your actual uh, presentation, but I love to hear, you know, one or two of, you know, the top findings that really stood out to you and made a difference about how you approach uh, your trading. Sure. I you know, you can get really excited about an IPO early on and they can have some wild moves in, you know, a few days. But, you know, one of the key findings was just, you know, how quickly that pattern will undercut its first trading day. So yeah. there's really no hurry. You know, it's even though you feel that there might be that you know, rush to get in, there really isn't. So when we studied the patterns, we found that, um, you know, often the first day low is undercut very quickly. So it's, you know, I wait now for an IPO base and I also, you know, wait through the institutional due diligence phase or the institutional advance phase to start because, you know, it's the IPO advanced phase is like a fast phase. So that can be um, traded more quickly, but really to latch on to a big leader that can be held for a long time, um, it's after that first mature base. So I think just distinguishing between the phases and knowing how to, which rules to apply to those different phases and um, having that research behind us, that that really helped with my trading to know which rules to apply for which phase. Because in the past, you know, this was another reason why I wanted to do the study was, you know, I would have these, I would pick like the right IPOs sometimes and, and buy them and have a good profit, but then give back a lot of that, you know, trying to hold on for a long time, you know, not realizing so much that these phases and these patterns repeat over and over again, and that trying to apply, you know, intermediate to long-term hold rules to that IPO advance phase is going to often result, you know, in a round trip or worse. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's great. Um, and you already mentioned William O'Neill, uh, Jim Ropel as well, uh, and also how to make money in stocks, but I'd love to hear, uh, were and there any other, you know, key books, mentors, or researches, uh, or resources, sorry, uh, that have had a large impact on, on how you trade? Yes. Like you mentioned, I, I've been very lucky with mentors, you know, Bill O'Neill and, and Jim Ropel have been my mentors over the years. And I've also learned a lot. Other mentors include, uh, Peter Brandt. Mm -hmm. and Dan Zanger and uh, Dr. Brett Steenbarger from a trading psychology perspective. So very lucky. And also um, Jack Schwager's books have influenced me and helped me. Um, I've gone through the Market Wizard series. And the other book that always um, comes to my mind when I'm asked about, you know, top books that have influenced me is um, One Up on Wall Street by Peter Lynch, just really knowing knowing what you have, knowing, knowing the company. Yeah, 
Great. And I'd love to hear what you're most looking forward to about doing this masterclass and, and teaching the students. Well, I love talking about the stock market and stocks. So I think we're going to have a lot of great fun because everyone's going to get together. And I think the people that are joining us have a passion for the stock market and stocks and IPOs as well. So I know we're going to have a great time together talking about stocks. Yeah, great. And do you have any advice for the students taking this class to kind of get the most out of the, the whole experience? Well, whenever I would attend a, a webinar or a seminar, when, as I was, you know, I'm always learning. So I'm always like writing my questions in advance. So one thing I would suggest is to, to write out questions so that we make sure that we cover them during the webinars. And this might sound self-serving, but, you know, read the book or reread the book if you haven't read it in a while, because I think, you know, we're going to try to go um, beyond that and um, and apply a lot of the concepts from the book and we'll cover them. But I think if you have the book handy, it would be great, you know, to read that and and then uh, or reread it if you've read it a while back. And uh, and then also you'll see that as we go through the master class that uh, each of the lifecycle team members have their own unique trading style. And we're gonna be sharing that uh, with the attendees. So um, one of the things I'm hoping is that attendees can find like the style and the tools that they can incorporate uh, to match their trading style. And so, you know, kind of comparing and contrasting the different styles and the different methods that we share uh, with attendees, I'm hoping that everyone will, you know, walk away with some tools to help with their own trading. Yeah, I think I completely agree with that. I'd, I'd reinforce that. And also going back to the questions, uh, we'll have dedicated spots within the class uh, itself where you can submit questions. And then during the live webinars, there'll be a Q&A box at the bottom of your screen where we highly suggest you, you know, submit any question you have uh, throughout because at the end of each webinar, we'll have, you know, a dedicated spot where uh, we can get those answered. So uh, thanks so much, Eve, for, for taking the time to do this. And uh, yeah, any last words to leave any of the students with? My pleasure. Thanks for asking me to, to meet with you today and chat and do a little bit of an intro. I'm looking forward to, to meeting the attendees and uh, just can't wait to get started. So thanks so much. Yeah, awesome. And to everybody watching, see you guys in the live webinars. Take care.